Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, it, it's been a little while, and I, I apologize, but I, I am uh, all done moving house for the most part. All the literal heavy lifting is done. We're just getting uh, a little settled in, so I actually have time to record again, and that makes me super happy. And uh, in a way, uh, KSB, our uh, Space Center here has uh, also just finished building itself a new house. We have a uh, the new VAB building unlocked, thank goodness, which means I can build bigger and better rockets uh, because I have the room to move the camera around and such. And so uh, this is e a beta, basically. Um, I don't intend on the finished product to look uh, quite so goofy. I have some other ideas in mind as far as the booster layout, but uh, this is our new super heavy lifter. This is something that is uh, hopefully going to be capable of putting uh, 100 tons to Mars or 500 tons to uh, low Earth orbit. Those margins are still a working figure, but basically on the top of this right now I have a, a 109 ton lead weight providing ballast, and uh, I'm going to give this a little test run. We'll talk about it a little further as it's on its way up. So uh, our launch stage currently is uh, two boosters with a total of 34 E1 advanced engines, and then our core stage is uh, nine RS-25 DEs, and uh, combined they're going to give us a lift uh, liftoff thrust to weight ratio of 1.22 which I think is fairly respectable for something this absolutely massive but the real test is is it going to work so there's our ignition sequence start and our long list of engines expanding exponentially and it looks like we're all spooled up so let's get these clamps off and we're up and away slowly at first but uh, I've had worse thrust to weight ratios. Also, those RF-25s do have a considerably longer spool up time than the E-1As, accounting for a little bit of that. But uh, now that we're up and moving, uh, I did have build footage of this. However, it was kind of jumbled and scattered all over the place since I built some of it in the old VAB. Uh, I basically had to build it in two sections and then combine them as sub-assemblies. So I built the upper transfer stage and then I built the launch stage, which took uh, way more time than it should and many configurations of trying to play with different engines but uh, in at the end I fall back on my good reliable duo of a Hydrolox core and Carolox boosters because it just uh, it tends to work anyway we're gonna have about uh, two minutes and some change two minutes 26 on the boosters and they will separate and the core stage will burn for a total of uh, a little under nine minutes to uh, hopefully get the entire upper stage to orbit. At least uh, that's how it worked with a slightly different booster layout. We're going to see how well this one translates for us. Um, this is an absolutely massive beast of a rocket. This is actually my very first time flying it in the twin booster configuration. I had four boosters and it looked really weird. I mean, this isn't too much better. This is kind of very curbly. I don't know how well something <laughs> with this kind of uh, aerodynamic footprint would fly in the real world. But uh, it, it, it seems to work in, in, in Kerbals. And I would be nothing if not uh, exploiting all of those little things that would in no way work in real life, but definitely work in Kerbal Space Program. So we're just going to cut through this uh, cloud layer and hopefully get to some clear skies above. Yeah, we're crossing Mach 1, and as we gain some altitude, I'm sure we'll pass through Mach Max Q shortly. I definitely want to be leaned over quite a bit more. As you can see, our core stage thrust to weight ratio after booster step is already up to 0.86. That's going to be a little higher when we actually do separate our boosters. So despite its absolutely tremendous size and weight and cost, this thing comes in at like 346,000 just the launch vehicle. I mean, the lead weight on top can't cost all that much. So this thing really is a bank buster. So, but if it works, it's certainly going to enable a uh, much hardier deep space program and uh, lots of better exploration as well as expanding our possibilities for crewed flights, which I'm super excited about. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to finish this thing uh, into orbit and uh, I'll turn you over to uh, post-edit new me, I guess, for uh, up to, 
up to date. Does that even work? Because it's going to be post. Anyway, I'll be commenting about other stuff as we're going the rest of the way to orbit. Ah, yes, it is new me, and uh, as I mentioned many minutes ago, uh, plans for the boosters are going to be a little bit different uh, in their final iteration. It really depends on when our next Mars window is, which is the first planned fight for this. And uh, while I'm talking about the boosters, they just fell away. Uh, and uh, how long our technology takes to uh, come up to speed. But um, basically, planned for them is the uh, RD270. Uh, I hope that's the, the correct engine that I'm speaking of, the most powerful Carolox engine uh, ever developed. We'll be replacing the, those massive clusters of E1s with massive clusters of RD270s. And um, we do have an upgrade, or, or rather I should say a better Hydrolox engine coming down the pipes uh, to replace some of these RS25s. Uh, now that we have them in good working order on our DN series, uh, hopefully we'll get them uh, we'll get an upgraded engine to better utilize this uh, ZA series. Uh, not an official name, still still prototyping. So anyway, uh, my flight plan was way off on this. As you can see, this is just an absolutely terrible ascent trajectory. Uh, I pitched over too much, or too little initially, and then too much, and uh, now I have to uh, lead it back a little bit to gain some altitude to avoid us from crossing right over our apogee and start plummeting fiery back to earth. So uh, I also don't know why my lead ballast weight is floating several meters above the fairing. Uh, it, that's very interesting. Um, I guess this uh, this whole thing might just be a little too massive for what KSP is ready to handle. The gap there between the uh, core stage and the upper stage is also quite unintentional. Um, that's just... Uh, a glitch I saw a lot on the DN series, and there's stage set, and the retro engines firing, and the twin HG3 vacuum engines fire up uh, pretty flawlessly. I'm really hoping to see uh, very solid, consistent performance from those engines as well. And we'll come out of our sped up footage, and we are in orbit with something like um, 5,700 meters per second and some change. Uh, that's going to be good to transfer almost anywhere. It's certainly going to be well good enough to put 100 tons to Mars. I think we might actually be able to up that limit to about 100. And, I mean, the weight is 109. So I think realistically we're probably looking at something like uh, 120. Uh, if we were to really ride out that margin, uh, maybe I should be more conservative with my estimate and say uh, 110, 115 tons to Mars. Um, but this whole upper stage... <coughs> excuse me, including the lead ballast, comes in at just under 500 tons, or just over 500 tons. I don't quite remember. So, uh, it's a good bet that we do have now a vehicle that can deliver 500 tons to low Earth orbit, which was the first requirement for the next generation launch vehicle, and this has passed it with flying colors. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this, and other than really wanting to do something completely different with the boosters to avoid it just looking so I guess awkward is the word I'm looking for uh, I'd say this thing is uh, ready to start printing production so that's uh, that's good I'm pretty happy with it so uh, I will be plotting out a, a name to follow our usual letter numerical uh, designation um, and hopefully we'll start getting a few of these uh, on the production lines. I've got some uh, cargos uh, already made up for them, as uh, I'm sure I shared the build episode of the next generation Mars lander that with its transfer stage and everything comes in at a little over 100 tons, which is what uh, caused me to set the requirements for this launch vehicle. Had I known it was going to have to be such a ridiculous of order of magnitude larger than the DN5B RS25, um, I may have been a little bit more conservative in my lander build, but uh, we're definitely going back to Mars. But I guess first we should probably worry about bringing the crew that's there home safely before we start uh, 
really expounding on our adventures out there. And anyway, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this super short episode. Uh, I hope to get back to a more regular output schedule soon, but uh, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later. <laughs>